There are a total of 21 Yu Yu Hakusho games out there, and I'm gonna go over every single one of them in great detail from oldest to newest. And trust me, by the end of this video, you'll have way too much knowledge for Yu Yu Hakusho games to the point where it will make you want a spirit gun to frick out of assistance. Hi, I'm Eric and I do everything, and Yu Yu Hakusho is the best anime in this world. No one cares to me. Yu Yu Hakusho is a Japanese manga series in which some delinquent named Yusuke gets hit by a car. But instead of things turning into a boring isekai, Yusuke instead becomes an underworld detective and must investigate and take care of evil demons roaming about the human world. While it's not as popular as other shonen anime like Naruto, One Piece, or Dragon Ball Z, Yu Yu Hakusho is considered one of the greatest shonen anime of all time, which of course means merchandise like t-shirts, action figures, what the frick is this, and yep, video games. And trust me, when you see the worst Yu Yu Hakusho has to offer in terms of video games, you'll want to get boom 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 by a car as well. Well, let's look at a smile bombastic world Yu Yu Hakusho games now, shall we? Alright, so what's the first game, Timmy? Oh, this is Yu Yu Hakusho Game Boy game? Four, that's 27 less than 31. Well, let's start with the first game, shall we? Oh boy, where to start with this game? Firstly, I gotta say, this game is your basic Street Fighter clone in which you're given some characters you can fight against in a versus mode, a story mode which only lets you beat the heck out of non-playable characters, oh, and twerking Kurobara, dang, look at him go. The fighting in this game is as bare bones as you expect, but despite that, it was honestly quite fun. I am a sucker for these types of 2D fighting games, and trust me, I played some bad ones, <coughs> but this wasn't bad, it was painfully average in a way. Way. In regards to the moves, you pretty much have everything you expect. A basic punch and kick, a throw, and a special move you could do that deals a fair amount of damage that takes time to charge up and use. For example, Kurama has taken a whip nene game way too seriously. One minor complaint I have though is the soundtrack. Every single song that's played during the story mode was the main theme. And was a why I love the main theme, don't get me wrong. Hearing the compressed 8-bit version of it on loop eventually made me want to calmly rage quit. In a nutshell, it's a Street Fighter game on the Game Boy with a Yu Yu Hakusho charm. Nothing more, nothing less. As we get along with the more recent games towards the end of the video, I'm sure we'll get more charm in regards to the Yu Yu Hakusho games. But for now, this game gets the best twerking animation award. Who needs only fans when you got Yu Yu Hakusho on the Game Boy? boy. This game apparently did really well, which caused three sequels to be made for this game as well. With the second and fourth games being your typical fighting game that honestly doesn't do anything special that the first game didn't, with the only difference being some of the looks and setting of the game. However, the third one is quite unique though. This is Yu Hakusho Dice and Dai Maki no Tabera, which interesting enough combines the Pokemon Overworld static and beat em up format to create a game that's fun, challenging, and best of all, starts with our mother jumping on the bed to wake us up. After that, we set up on an adventure to explore the world, well, at least that's what I would say if people stopped blocking me from going, going places. places. After exploring around for a bit, we get caught by Keiko, who accuses us of skipping school and somehow manages to carry us across the town into the school. Imagine being forced to go to school like this every day. Well, at least it's a better strategy than slapping people. Wait, what? After being taken to the school, the beating up combat begins, where for some reason, everyone in the school is out to beat the frick out of me. I mean, we got deadly purse whackers, evil ape baddies, and this creepy girl that I can walk through for some reason. I think she's flirting with me. <laughs> All joking aside, the gameplay was quite fun and controlled pretty well, and dang, it was quite hard too, which is especially shown during the boss battle of the school, which is Kurabara. Which dang, I tried beating up this guy 10 times and I could not beat him up at all. Worst of all, when you die, you are put back at the very beginning of the game, meaning you have to replay the entirety of the game again in order to attempt to beat the frick out of him again. Meaning there are only two logical choices to take in regards to this game. One, waste my time to defeat it, or two, rage quit. I chose option three, build a time machine and go back to the past and slap my past self. Wait, what? Overall, this game is meh. Okay, I completed all the Game Boy games. What's next to me? Oh, there are two of them, right, Timmy? Well, I have high hopes for these two, so let's check them out, shall we? 
Yeah, the Yu Yu Hakusho Game Boy Advance games are considered quite horrible. So much so that one out of the two games, Spirit Detective, was so bad that I got a segment in the Civil War anime games video. Meaning I'm not gonna talk about that game since I already did that in another video. However, what about the other one, Yu Yu Hakusho Tournament Tactics? This game came out a year after Spirit Detective and was made by the same company. So have they learned a lesson and actually made a decent game? Or did they somehow mess up and made us lose or you Hakusho fans want to cry? Oh, come on again! Oh, well, maybe it's not as fast as the review says it is. Let's check this game out, shall we? Dang, the Yu Hakusho Game Boy Advance opening music was more motivational than Jump Force is for taking out the trash. Heck, the whole soundtrack for this game is honestly some of the best I ever heard in terms of the Game Boy Advance. As is filled with a mix of original music and remix to Yu Hakusho music for this game. I mean, listen to this remix of Smile Bomb. Oh yeah, this is a game. As hinted towards by the title, this is a tactics game, which was honestly a nice change of pace from the beat em ups and fighting games from previous games. And I gotta say, I actually enjoyed enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing special about this game, as this game doesn't do anything experimental or anything different from the tactics genre besides the fact that it's just Yu Yu Hakusho themed. But still, the fact that Atari at least put some effort in regards to the gameplay unlike the last game really shows, especially since Atari doesn't exactly have the best track record when it comes to licensed games. The gameplay is, wow, it's a tactics game. You take turns moving in a chest-like motion in which you are given the choice to attack, move, power up, or kick a demon in a demon no-no spot. Speaking of no-no spots, I really like how this game looks, as Yu Yu Hakusho and an isometric view looks pretty cool. And let's not forget to mention that these Yu Yu Hakusho trivia-like characters are freaking adorable. Dane, I could snuggle up isometric 8-bit Kurobaro here, though something tells me that I took things a bit too far. This game also has RPG mechanics for those who freaking cares, which allows you to level up your offense, spirit energy, movement, and thickness in order to become the ultimate spirit detective and win a dark tournament. Overall, this game gets the cutest you hugs your game rating that doesn't involve twerking. Well, that was interesting. Timmy, please tell me there aren't any more retro you hugs your games. I want to get to the recent stuff now. Oh boy, this is going to be a long video. Remember Sonic Kids? Well, Sega, the company that made Sonic, also developed and published a Yu Yu Hakusho game on the Sega Game Gear called Yu Yu Hakusho Horibichi Mono no Gai Kishu. Alright, let's check this game out. Right away, we are thrown into the character selection screen, in which, after selecting the character, we are thrown right away into choosing between four levels. Level B, Level C, Level D, or Level- <laughs> Speaking of- Ah, this game is surprisingly fun! With its uniquely played characters that each have their own strengths and weaknesses, gameplay that is honestly a blast to play, and kinda gives me Streets of Rage 2 vibes, and I mean, come on, look at how this game looks, it just screams 90s Sega. All this needs is Sanic and a freaking Nintendo sign, and it is perfect! The game is quite simple, select a character, select a stage, get from point A to point B, being the frick out of enemies and doing platforming sessions, and defeating the boss at the end of the game in a surprisingly addictive manner. While this all does get repetitive at times, especially during some parts of the game that makes me go, yep, classic Sega, I gotta say, I had an amazingly fun time with this game, as I had such a blast with this game and wish more people talk about it. Anyway, this game did so well that Sega decided to make a sequel to this game called Yu Yu Hakusho 2 Gagotu Shuji Kai no Tekakai. <laughs> Yu Yu Hakusho 2 Gagetko Shuji Kode no Tekaki, which took me 7 tries to say on camera, so this game better be good. Remember the boss battles from the last game? Well, Sega must have loved that part because they got rid of the fun platforming sessions and instead made this the entirety of the gameplay. Who thought this was a good idea? Don't get me wrong, it was fun for like the first 5 seconds, but this is literally all the gameplay has to offer, with the only difference being different characters you can fight against, yes that's literally the only difference, as there's the same background, same repetitive art style, and for some reason, Kuramaro looks like a deflated derp whose face I want to punch over and over again. 
And you want to know what the worst part is? No, it isn't the repetitive gameplay or questionable visuals. No, it's the fact that every single time you or the opposing fighter attacks, you have to witness the same 11 second cutscene with no minor changes each time. Okay, look, I get it. This game is based on an anime, and anime tends to have those repetitive launch transformation and attack sequences during battles, but the immense hype surrounding those anime scenes make up for it. But what the frick's hype about this game? Yusuke going shooty shooty for the 10 million time? Okay, am I over saturating? Yes. And was this the worst Yu Hakusho game has to offer though? No, trust me. There's worse, and you'll see that more towards the end of the video. But this game was honestly just a repetitive mess that you should avoid at all costs, and something that 120% pales in comparison to the first Yu Hakusho Game Gear game. It should be put into the depths of hell. Wow, now that we completed the handheld Yu Hakusho Sega games, let's talk about the Sega Genesis ones now. Starting with Yu Hakusho Gaiden MD, which I'm pretty excited to play because I heard really good things about it. All right. Let's check it out. This game starts with an immense eye staring contest, with Yusuke clearly struggling to survive. I mean, look at that eye twist. This leads to a variety of cutscenes, which, out of context, kind of amuse me. After the cutscenes, we are thrown right into the character selection screen, in which we are given a choice to play the stories of four different characters, in which I chose Yusuke, where after making some random choices on where to go, we come across our first battle. And oh my goodness, this is revolutionary. The battles have typical RPG game elements, but with a twist, and that's the fact that you can move around in a 2D pane to attack and dodge in real time, offering not only quite the unique RPG gameplay that I have not seen from any other game before, but also surprised that this looked freaking amazing. Well, amazing most of the time. Speaking of the sprites, man does the cutscene look pretty amazing, and faithful to the source material as well. Which is just a shame to mention that there's one annoying thing keeping me from claiming this to be the perfect Yu Hakusho game, and that is the overabundance of superpower cutscenes this game offers. Every single time you do a special move in this game, a 7 second cutscene plays out, and whether you get hit or not is randomly generated, meaning that you have to wait 7 seconds every couple of seconds to see whether a power Alpha move hits you or not. Can you imagine a 7 second cutscene every single time you stand up? All complaints aside, this is a game you Hakusho fans are going to love, even if you cannot read Japanese. Though knowing Japanese would improve the gameplay experience considering you do have to make some choices regarding this game. Wow, that was a great game, but Sega decided to go with a different company for the next Sega Genesis game, in which they went with the company Treasure, who was most notable for making, well, Mitano's Treasure Land Adventure, <laughs> whom would also go on to make the best anime game of all time, but that's another story for another day. Did Treasure turn into nostalgia? 90s anime into a great game? Well, let's find out. Treasure is a freaking genius. This is perhaps the best anime fighting game of all time. Yes, this is better than Dragon Ball Fighter Z and better than any generic anime fighter, honestly. As not only does this game perfectly take parts from what made Street Fighter 2 freaking awesome and implemented it into this game, but the developers clearly put love and care in every single character to make them represent the series perfectly. There are a total of 11 characters in this game, which may not seem like a lot, but each one of these characters have their own unique style of fighting that you couldn't get from any other character in this game. For example, Kurama focuses more on defense and long range attacks, while Kurabara focuses on being right in your face and playing aggressively. This game honestly doesn't do anything too unique or special to change the fighting genre, and doesn't do anything too experimental that changed the fighting game industry. But the fact that this game perfected the 2D fighting genre and looks freaking stunning is honestly notable enough to call this an amazing game that's perfect. Well, Almost perfect. As there's one thing that does bother me about this game, and that are the shadows. Yeah, I know that's a weird and random complaint, but due to the constant glitchiness and annoying shuffling the shadow brains, it just broke the immersion of the game. And also strangely enough, gave me an unwanted fear of shadows as well. So, is this game worth it? Well, if you like Street Fighter, Yu Hakusho, and Super Saiyan Kurubara, then yes, play it. If not, shame on you, go to the corner. I mean, look at Super Saiyan Kurubara. Isn't he adorable? He's almost as cute as me. Ah, oh, shucks. <laughs> Shush to me, even anime protagonists need self-esteem. Anyway, that was Finding Perfection. What's this on the list, Timmy? <laughs> the 3DO.
No. No. No! Yep, this video, this was a, well, strange time for gaming. With this $700 system trying to combine actual videos and gameplay for the majority of its lifespan, heck, one of the most notable 3DO games, Night Trap, was so controversial and strange that it was one of two games that Congress had to deal with due to its immense sexual nature and violence, which led to the creation of the ESRB rating system we all know and love today. Thanks, 3DO. Very cool. Yep. They made a Yu Yu game for the system, and I am not looking forward to it. Let's just get this over with, shall we? Let's not check this game out. This game is slow, janky, boring, and let's not even get started on the looks. Look at Yusuke's legs there. I know women like tall boys, but still, isn't the length of his legs a little unrealistic? I do not approve of the unrealistic body standards this game pushes on boys. This game takes place in the tournament arc, which, of course it does, is the best tournament arc of all time. But 75% of the Yu Yu games take place during the tournament arc, and this was by far the worst one yet. Oh well, at least we got some fan service though, which I don't think Blue Mohawk Eye approves of. You know what? I refuse to talk about this game. What's that on the list, Timmy? <laughs> Four of them? Gosh darn it, I'm never leaving this couch now. Well, the family friendly Yu Hakusho SNES games can't be that bad, can it? If the 3DO Yu Hakusho game was considered the worst Yu Hakusho game based on the tournament, this Yu Hakusho game should be considered the worst Yu Hakusho game of, well, all time. Yep, even the 3DO game shines better than this game, because at least you could control the character in that game. That's right, the gameplay of this game, if you can even call it that, just centers around you pushing and holding the button to decide what attack you want to do, then proceeding to watch on average a 15 second cutscene to see if your attack will play out. It's mindless, boring, stupid, and clearly was catered towards some 5 year old kid who wanted to see Yusuke go boom boom. That being said though, it was not all bad, as it looks pretty good. And the cutscenes are honestly pretty cool. Though the UI and US of the game looks like something that came out of a horror space game like Metroid that really appalls me. Which makes me think that the person behind the Metroid shoot is none other than Frick, you again? Okay, that game was pretty bad, but who knows, maybe the second one's better. Please be better, I want it to be better. It was better ish. When it comes to the 16-bit era of fighting games between Sega and Nintendo, I don't think it's an unpopular opinion to say that Sega clearly has the better fighting games. I mean, just look at the difference between the Mortal Kombat ports of each system. Yeah, Sega is clearly the cool one here. That's the case with this Yu Hakusho fighting game as well. It's basically just a watered down version of the Sega Genesis 1, but despite that, it was still fun to play. As the game presents itself as a more fast paced action like game rather than ones focusing on strategy and combos, i.e. this game was pretty much the definition of mindless fun, and I'm all for it. This game is by far the most vibrant and balanced game, but everything else just pales in comparison to the Sega Genesis fighting game, as everything about this game is just, well, average. from the combat, moves, effects, and backgrounds. Though I have to admit, the fan service in this game pleases me. Two shirtless characters in one battle? A mind freaking blown. Alright, we went from worse to average. According to logic, the next Yu Hakusho game is going to be freaking amazing. Shush to me. Let's check out the third Yu Hakusho game now, shall we? It wasn't freaking amazing. It was the same thing as the first SNES game, but with more characters. Moving on, what's the fourth game like? It was freaking average, again. It was basically the same thing as the second SNES game we covered, but the fan goes barf. Well, that was a totally non rush review of the Yu Hakusho SNES games. There's one more retro game, right, Timmy? <laughs> oh boy, this better be good. Let's check it out, shall we? This game takes place yet again during the tournament arc, but the amount of creativity this game offers is quite staggering, to the point where I would consider this game as the best non 2 d fine new Hakusho game. The gameplay centers around you having the trigger to aim at characters just like past games, but instead of not being able to control the trigger, you instead are able to move around the mouse and go fully all blasty blasty to blasty imposing fighters, offering for not only a unique experimental game experience, but one that is honestly quite addictive and, in a sense, revolutionary for Yu Yu Hakusho games. Not only is the gameplay really fun, but also look at these games. The backgrounds are amazing, the characters are given a lot of care and animations in regards to the moveset and looks, and gosh darn, those cutscenes are visually impressive and oh so adorable. I mean look at Botan. I now have two regrets because of her. My only gripe for this game is that, well, it's quite easy and short, as you can complete the entirety of this game in 21 minutes and 32 seconds, but gosh darn it, this experience really makes up for it. And come on, you cannot tell me the scene brings a smile on your 
face, plus both had winks at you towards the end as well, making me only slightly fanboy. Overall, the Yu Hakusho PC game is a short, sweet experience that every Yu Yu Hakusho fan needs to play, no questions asked. Plus, it's only $121.99. Anyone can afford that for 20 minutes of gameplay, right? Well, that was all the retro Yu Yu Hakusho games, so let's get into the 2000s Yu Yu Hakusho game now, starting with the PS2 Yu Yu Hakusho games. Let's start with Yu Yu Hakusho Dark Tournament. I played other Yu Yu Hakusho games, so this one should be easy, right? <laughs> Oh. After the copyrighted opening, right away we are thrown to the final boss of the game, in which it is impossible to defeat him in an intentional way, as this defeat sets the motivation of the whole game. Get strong enough by being the frick out of other people to defeat El Muscles over there. This leads us to a train with Genkai, which leads us to the tutorial of the gameplay, in which you can hook, jab, kick, and throw and block your way to victory, with blocking being quite overpowered, literally. With the block, you can literally block anything that comes your way, like punches, powerful spirit attacks, and divorce papers for the waifu you never had. Besides this overpowered mechanic, I gotta say, running around in a 3D plane of field really was a nice pace from all the 2D fine action, and dare I say it, in some occasions, felt a lot more satisfying, especially since the simplistic gameplay really made it satisfying and easy to understand for someone randomly mashing buttons most of the time. However, the simplistic nature of the game is perhaps the weakest part, as this game doesn't really do anything too normal worthy or unique that only a Yu Hakusho game can provide. And due to that, you could just really replace a Yu Hakusho branding with anything else. Which is such a shame, considering this is a game with a lot of fan service that any Yu Hakusho fan would love. The best part about this game isn't the fan service though, nor is it gameplay, looks, or music. No, it's Koto the announcer. She acts like the tutorial guide and commentator throughout these battles. And my goodness, does she make this game a whole lot better. From her commentary, her self-awareness, and she can moonwalk as well. Okay, maybe not the moon. One of the strangest things to do in regards to this game is during the strange token game in between chapters, which cannot be skipped for some reason. Yeah, I don't know why the developers thought playing the board game with you Hakusho characters were necessary, but hey, it could be worse. It could be playing Go with Lelouch from Kogias. The last thing I got to mention about this game is the fact that it's honestly quite easy for the most part, as the majority of battles would most likely go like this. Yeah, thankfully the story mode lasts a solid hour, and there are a variety of other modes as well that are quite self-explanatory, like survivor mode, arcade, training mode, and the freaking token game! Alright, that's pretty much it for that game, but what if I told you the developers of Sonic Advance, Sonic Unleashed, Sonic Generations, and <coughs> made a Yu Hakusho PS2 game called Yu Hakusho Forever? Well, let's check it out, shall we? Right away, oh my freaking goodness, the opening is so nostalgic and awesome. And while I can't play the music for this opening due to copyright, the fact that the developers created a custom opening based on Smile Bomb, the opening to Yu Hakusho, is something I honestly applaud. Plus, whoever made Botan the main menu navigator deserves a raise. After starting the game, something notable about this game is the fact that it seems to treat it more like an anime rather than a game. As we got multiple minute long cutscenes and, ironically enough, commercial breaks between each chapter. Heck, the only difference there is between the anime and game really are the differences in mottos and the fact that you can actually play the battles, which is something I honestly thought was really cool and wish more anime games did. Speaking of the gameplay though, firstly, I would like to mention that in regards to the gameplay of this game, it finally does the opposite of the last game. This game generally feels like a Yu Hakusho game with its super attacks, rose whips, and awesomely enough, transformation scenes. However, despite all these cool ideas, the gameplay is just not that fun for me, mainly due to the fact that these animations and hits often feel a bit off. For example, look at this animation as opposed to the hit bosses. We are approaching Super Smash Bros. mainly levels of hit boss weirdness here. Imagine a lamp having a hit boss like that. <laughs> Unknowing complaints aside, this game was honestly really charming, and it's very interesting that a company that captured the hearts of millions by developing various Sonic games would make a game such as this. I wonder what else they would make in the future. Oh no. And with that, we are finally on the last PS2 Yu Hakusho game and the 20th game I played today. <laughs> yeah, I just never knew his favorite anime of all time had this many games. This just doesn't make- ah. Ow. You have to do what you do. Oh, sorry. Anyway, let's just check out the last Yu Hakusho game, shall we? 
This is, yep, you guessed it, another fighting game based on a dark tournament arc made by creators of Sonic Adventure. But instead of getting decently charming cutscenes, we instead get this monstrosity. All joking aside, the majority of this game is presented with cutscenes from the anime rather than doing anything truly new or unique in regards to cutscenes. That being said though, the gameplay from the game improved a ton from the last game, to the point where I would consider the gameplay of this game to be much better than average in regards to the anime fighting game's gameplay, mainly thanks to the motto improvements, more fast paced battling system that is consistent with his hitboxes, and gameplay that feels balanced and fair, um, well, most of the time at least. Other than all of that though, it's honestly just the same thing yet again, but with some minor changes that apparently makes it a different game. Yay, moving on. This brings us to the 21st game we're going to take a look at, the final game of this video, and it's Yu Hakusho on the DS. This game isn't a fighting game, but rather a dungeon crawler, which I'm pretty excited about. They could not mess this up. All right, let's check this game out, shall we? This game was freaking hard, and a game where I died over and over and over and over and over and over again. But in a sense, it was pretty fun. This game starts with us playing rock, paper, scissors against Genkai for some apparent reason, which then leads us to this dark evil cave filled with baddies. These baddies, however, are some of the most frustratingly overpowered bosses you'll ever face against. But these baddies weren't the worst part. No, the worst part is the fact that you take damage from attacking the enemies. Seriously, Yusuke, I know anime characters suddenly get some overpowered boost to the verge of death, but you don't have to beat yourself up to achieve that. Don't you know how utterly stupid you look right now? Another annoying part about this game is the fact that when you die, you will boot it back to the beginning of the game. That's right, you have to go through all of that again just to get beaten up again. Thankfully, you can save the game, but the game still resets each time you die even if you do save, so what's the point? That being said though, despite these annoyances, there's something within me that wants to keep trying. And after try, after try, after try, I did it. I completed the first level. Oh, shut your mouth, Timmy. I am going to beat this. I couldn't get past this part, so I'm giving up. Uh, okay, I'm glad I'm finally done with these games. I love you, Hakusho, but 21 games is quite a lot. Even an awesome, attractive anime gamer like myself needs a break sometimes. Huh? Who's that? Get the door, Timmy. <sighs> it's Torki Kubara. What's he here for? <laughs> Well, what's he gonna do about it? Oh, oh frick. 